Hello everyone, I'm Annie Gibbons and you're listening to Memoirs of Successful Women, the podcast where you get to hear candid conversations with fascinating women from around the globe who share aspects of their business and life journey, how they measure their success and what they have learnt along the way. Right, so I'd love to welcome Carrie Bowley to um, our podcast today. Welcome, Carrie. Yes, I appreciate it. Tell me your story, Carrie. You made a big decision in your early 20s to become an entrepreneur and then to start supporting side hustlers, if you like. What does that mean? How did that all come into being? Yeah. So for me, I actually studied liberal studies. I actually studied women's studies and sociology. So I actually had no plans or intentions to be a business owner. But as I was about to graduate, I just had some pivotal realizations that even watching my friends graduate who got jobs, even those friends still were struggling financially. So it was just a good wake-up call in a lot of ways to have a backup plan. So a lot of people, they kind of put all their eggs in one basket in terms of getting one career and going into one industry. But it was a good awakening that in the 21st century, it makes sense to have a backup plan of sorts. So I wasn't like a hardcore entrepreneur. I didn't sell all my stuff and live in my parents' basement and build a startup from the ground up, but I took a little bit more of a moderate approach to business, and that was get a full-time job in teaching and then take my evenings and weekends and really side hustle and build, build a couple businesses that required more sweat equity versus a ton of capital. Yeah, and I think that's a common journey, isn't it? And, and certainly the women that I mix are doing exactly that. I'm doing that. You know, I have a full-time job and I've got a side hustle, my passionate business um, of lipstick consulting on the side. And that's what I'm seeing more and more people doing. You've got the security of the day job, but you do have a passion. And also, not only do you you maybe dream that one day that passion will become your full-time um, opportunity but also there's so many skills if you like to learn along the way about becoming an entrepreneur do you find that with most people you link with oh my gosh so many good skills I feel like it's just a breeding ground for learning leadership and communication skills and networking and developing a stronger self-image I feel like it's the ultimate personal development platform So I've been really grateful for that and that's really evolved my journey of becoming a better person in so many different ways. So tell me about the early days when you were working your day job as a teacher and then you also then started your business. Was that Tandem Consulting then or was that a different business? Well, we've rebranded a little bit, but yeah, Tandem Consulting is is coaching and also we leverage e-commerce. So we build online communities in the e-commerce space. Um, so yeah, I, I started those companies pretty young and didn't have a lot of skills, but I had a lot of, I would say, enthusiasm and teachability. So again, like the work ethics were strong, excitement was strong, but I didn't have a ton of skills. So a lot of my early 20s was spent refining and growing those polished skill sets so that over time I could create more results in those industries. So we actually got access to coaches, though. That was really what preceded my business journey is getting access to people who had already created a lot of success in e-commerce and coaching and really tapping into the mindset. So I tell people that throughout my 20s, it was really a, an adventure of chasing the thought process of people a lot more successful than I was. So I'd say that's my secret, my, my key to success. I think it's a really big key to share because a lot of people feel that they need to do it themselves, that other people are too busy, that they wouldn't be comfortable to share. Whereas I actually find that most people who've had learnings are more than happy to share and they can also link you with people who may be able to help you grow in very specific areas. I feel that the more niche you get, the more aware of other people in other niches that can be advantageous to specific um you know, problems, they have the solution to those problems. Did you find that initially you sort of went to Google and you worked it out yourself or you 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 knew straight up you need to surround yourself with people who have these skills? Oh, instantly I knew I had I had to surround myself with people. There, there was no chance I was going to successfully scale a business at 
22 by myself. And I think that's the challenge a lot of people have is, especially with social media, sometimes it makes it seem like business is easy. Uh, but there's a pretty thick line that separates employees and big business owners, right? And, and I would separate big business from self-employment. Those are two very different categories. So I knew I had to get around the people who, who created success and had the expertise. And I grew up playing athletics. So it was really a no-brainer in sports. Like if you want to be really good in athletics, you have to get a good coach. So financially, it was just very logical and very practical to find people who'd done what I wanted to create and earn their time and their expertise. And, you know, I just didn't want to waste any time. That was another big piece for me. I was very humble. I didn't mind asking for help because I wanted to really reach the, the end goal or like the lifestyle results, the choices in the most efficient way possible. So it was like I knew if I learned from my own mistakes, that would definitely lengthen the journey by many years versus just going straight to the source and tapping into the mindset. Mm. Did you know that you needed to go to a variety of sources, variety of coaches and mentors, or did you actually see a person in business who actually had been there before you and could teach you so much in their own right? Yeah, so we, we definitely went with the, the latter. We uh, we found people that we felt like had really foundational success, like success in all areas. I see a lot of people where they maybe get patchwork support from a lot of different people, and, and we've got a lot of supportive outlets. But in terms of mentorship for our life, we said let's find people who have what we want. We like the values and the principles that they live by and how they've grown their companies, right? And we've taken very holistic coaching from them. So they really have a big helicopter view on our life and can very much support us in all different areas. And my biggest thing that I see, especially with young folks, is um, they, they want to do something significant, but they don't have a firm foundation. Yes. And so maybe they're creating success in their engineering career or as a medical practitioner, but then their relationship is suffering or their health isn't going well. And it's pretty hard to build something of significance if the foundation isn't really strong. And so we took a very foundational approach and found people who would really mentor us more for, for the long haul. So we've been actually working with our mentors for 14 years. Wow. So they've seen us through a lot. <laughs> <laughs> when you looked at them and thought those people are successful, what were the key elements of what you determined at that young age to be success and has that changed over the 14 years? Yeah, I would say, um, you know, the principles and values are very important. Do they have, like, similar ethics and a similar vision as we did? As well as are they impacting other people positively? You know, coming from my women's studies sociology background, my, my goal was always how do I help a lot of people? And I just didn't really have a medium or a vehicle to do that. Um, and I'd never thought of business as a medium to help people. That was just sort of like a gap in my brain. So when I saw their results and really their success was a function of helping a lot of other people, it, it was kind of a neat blend of everything that I wanted because I went into teaching, like I said, so I got to help people. But I got paid like just above the poverty line to do that. Yeah. So it came with a huge cost to help people, and that was income and lifestyle. So when I found people who like made significant income, had all these great lifestyle choices, and really lived a life of significance and fulfillment, I was like, wow, that's a pretty amazing existence. And that's what attracted me to them was that balance, and that blend. Yeah, definitely. And then you became a young mum. And so to be able to balance your um, your family life and your career development, uh, that was the perfect lifestyle blend that you were actually looking for while encasing that in uh, your with your values and your passion to make a difference. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was able to, I was able to scale out of my teaching career in my mid twenties. So I, I had a good batch of like a handful of years where I didn't have children and I could just take a lot more of that time and reinvest it into other people, um, pursue some of my other passions too. But then the, the biggest blessing was when we did have kids, I was able to be a full, full time stay at home mom, but also still have like a vehicle and passions and a way to impact people and I think that's the challenge for a lot of a lot of women and men to it to an extent but it, it's very binary like I have to be full-time stay-at-home or I have to be a full-time working professional and I just think there's a lot more fluidity 
Uh, there's a lot more options that we can explore to have whatever a perfect balance is for somebody, right? And that looks different for each individual. But for me, I found like the right sweet spot of, of both. With the clients that you've worked with now, and I know there are so many, what are their biggest challenges do you find? Well, similar to myself and, and my husband, Craig, they're people who have a lot of ambition, good work ethics. They also have a really big vision and I think high hopes for what the future can entail and what they can accomplish, but they don't have a lot of money. Hmm. They don't have capital. Um, they're working good full-time jobs, but it's not like they have, you know, 60, 70 hours to invest into a traditional company because that's a lot of very, very hard work and very grueling. So I would say the biggest challenge is, is a big dream, good work ethics, but not a lot of resources in terms of, um, you know, taking more of a traditional approach to starting, you know, more of a traditional business. Mm. Yeah, it's the finance and the time, isn't it? Because you've obviously still, you know, that, 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 that time that you are working at your day job but your mind is still going, I wish I had more time to work on my side hustle. I wish I had some extra cash to be able to invest. Uh, what do you find is um, the process for when people make that choice to then leave their day job to pursue the side hustle? Is that a time of excitement and fear all at the same time? What does that look like? Well, that's a really good question because the way that we coach people is actually to fully replace their professional income with their side hustle before they make that transition. So a lot of people, you know, if their side hustle is creating more like 20%, 60% of their job income, oftentimes people will take the leap. But our approach is, hey, let's just fully replace yep. that income so that it's very stress-free. There's no fear because you've set it up in a really stable, ongoing way. Um, and so that's kind of the beauty of more our approach, being a little bit more conservative in that transition and making sure it's very strong and stable um, so that you don't have to look back. And you can, of course, take whatever time for your family or other passions, but then maintain your side hustle as it continues to scale. Yeah, and I think that's, that comes with so much maturity, sensibility. Um, it, it allows the person to be so much more confident. So if you're in a day job that you're already, you're earning 100000 200000 whatever that may be, your side hustle has to actually equate to that before you because you were comfortable with what you were earning before you had the side you hustle. You don't want your lifestyle to go down either, right? Exactly. At that point, you're not looking to you know downsize and move into a small apartment. You're, you know, the goal is to really create an abundance right yeah. and help people evolve in those lifestyle choices and um, we work with a couple of doctors who they actually really enjoy their careers but they've said hey let's go part-time let's work three days a week instead of five and yeah. so it's interesting because lifestyle choices can give you just a lot of gradients in terms of how much or how little you want to scale back it doesn't have to be this big black or white thing yeah, and I find so many people are black and white. It's like I've got to quit my job and then do this. You kind of go, well, that's exactly it. You could reduce. You could go to four days, three days, two days. Uh, you can work around it. So with that gives you that that confidence and that stability because otherwise there is great risk. You know, we are, we know that only, you know, 1.6, 1.8% of small businesses are still operating, you know, within a decade. And so those are alarming facts. So, so also I'm thinking as you keep developing your side hustle it gives you that incentive to make sure that you're one of those success um, candidates you're you're there for the long haul um, you're focusing without the risk if you like uh, to be able to give yourself more um, confidence to power forth and control I think I think there's a big element of control that's very powerful because in performance based environments Typically, if we're willing to work hard and we've got good coaches, I mean, I do think that's an important piece of the puzzle. Um, success is inevitable if you're willing to be consistent for long enough with the right coaching. It's just you got to make sure those parameters are in place. And what's frustrating for a lot of people that I work with is in their jobs, it's so position-based. So they're very used to not actually having control, but it's mm. very refreshing once you grab a hold of something you believe in and you're willing to invest you know, time and sweat equity into that you can control the, the pace and, and speed that you really do scale, right? And I think there's something very powerful in, in that. Mm. 
So what does your day-to-day -day life look like now? It's a good question. So today's a good, a good example. Um, I actually was on a podcast this morning and, you know, played with my son for a while, my toddler. I've got a toddler. Um, got my daughter out the door for school. Uh, did some business in the afternoon. Uh, went and had a pedicure with my sister-in-law, who we actually helped scale out of her job. So we're both pretty available during the day, which has been fun. Um, and now I'll do some more business in the evening, hang out with the kids. So it's very like fluid going from mom to business owner to sister. And it's, it's, it's neat the way we've been able to build it out. Yeah. Well, it means that you can get the best of both worlds, isn't it? It's, it's, it's seizing opportunities yeah. as they present and then working around that. Saying that you have to be that type of personality who's quite happy to say, hey, I've got the seven days. I've got 24 hours in the day. I'm quite happy to just go with the flow and see what opportunities present and then go in and out of work. Other people then find that difficult. They, they're so used to the nine to five and I have specific hours right. when I'm on or off. And so I, I notice that massive difference in entrepreneurs who go, nope, I'm happy to. I, I appreciate the value in the lifestyle that that can give me. But I also appreciate that that means that I might be, that's right, on LinkedIn at 11 o'clock at night or doing something, yeah. um, a podcast with someone because it's an international uh, podcast and, and yeah the journey is very very different how yeah. do you how do you, um, so as well as having an, uh, an online business what does your business look like how do you connect with your clients so at this phase of the journey um, we, we're pretty particular about who we coach because we really want to make sure that again the values align that they've got good baseline mindset and that we actually feel like we can help them become successful. And so what's challenging is a lot of people are more curious about business ownership versus serious. Mm. So we take a bit of time to really get to know people before we offer to officially coach them, just so that we make sure that they're a really good return on investment, right? And yeah. that we can actually see them becoming successful over time. Um, the big reason why I think a lot of businesses fail is actually the expectations aren't very strong on what it's going to take. Yeah. We like to be really transparent with people on, hey, here's here's what it looked like for us. It wasn't easy. It was hard work, but it was very worth it, right? Yeah. Um, and just make sure that there's a lot of openness on like what it, what it's going to take for us to help them do what we've done, or even to you know partially do what we've done. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a lot of good conversations with people, and you know, social media has been great because we've been able to put out a lot of content with our beliefs and a lot, of, a lot of the principles and strategies that we've used to create our success. So that's created a neat funnel of people connecting with us. Um, so we've made some good partnerships from social media, and it's interesting because even if we don't officially partner and offer to coach someone, there's a lot of other doors that we can help support people with, and that's what's been very fun about. LinkedIn specifically is we love being a good resource to good people so it's just a matter of in which capacity and is it formally or informally how do we kind of help help people that's right and, and often there's no you don't know what that immediate return is you know that's right it can be great just to help people and other time because you're just consistently in that space and, and communicating about a certain topic as you do uh, other people just watch that and when there is a need it can come from a very broad range of, of leads and opportunities and recommendations that suddenly that will come back to you I'd like to touch back on what you said before which I think was really interesting that many people when they're looking to you know find a coach it's all about them is this coach worth worth the money for me what will I get out of it and I often want a quick return because it looks so easy it looks like I don't know you know need that much help to get myself on the way and uh, whereas what you're actually saying is you know well from you from your perspective you're saying well is it worth it for us to align with this person we want that person to be successful that person will represent our brand that person represents the time that they had with our business and therefore they have to be right for us and so you've actually shown that there has to be that perfect synergy and that choice as also to actually say you're not right for me you're not going to get the benefits from me or you're actually not at the right stage to be able to appreciate the effort that it's going to take yeah that's another good point too it's it's interesting because Again, if someone doesn't at least have like a reasonably good foundation, 
people will always be backpedaling, even with the best mentor or the best expert in their corner. Um, if they're not willing to do the work or be consistent doing the work, or they just don't like the work, <laughs> um, it's just often not a match. And so we like to just have a lot of upfront conversations about what that looks like before we really go down the journey with somebody. Because mm. for us, it's really like more of a lifelong partnership. We're yeah. really in somebody's corner for life versus just like an acute short-term coach, yeah. right? It's a little bit more significant in terms of longevity. So taking our time on the front end is is very insignificant to us for the duration of what type of relationship we're really looking to sow into somebody. Mm. As you've continued to grow your business, have you diversified in the offerings that it has or have you kept quite true to what you originally started with? Yeah, I would say we've kept pretty true, but we've also added some other neat elements. Um, we, we've built our businesses for about 14 years and the first 13, we didn't use any social media, wow. believe it or not. So it's really just been in the last year that we've cracked the code on social media. And so a new offering that we really add to the add to the pot is social social media and branding and leveraging social media to help people grow their side hustles. So that's been a fun development. And it's kind of funny that we never really leveraged it, but I'm glad we at this point have because it's been really impactful and given us just a ton of leverage and a much bigger microphone to be able to, to broadcast our beliefs and the right people have really come to us as a function of having a bigger a bigger microphone and a bigger platform. Yeah. So I know you speak at a lot of events all over the states, um, I'm assuming globally. Uh, how have they come to you? Has that been something through your, cho your choice to move into more social media or did that actually come through the clients that you had already? Yeah, so we've been public speaking for well over a decade now. So we, we speak to a number of different organizations that are, are entrepreneurs who are leveraging a lot of the systems that we teach. So it's pretty niche specific. Um, and we do global. So one of my favorite public speaking engagements was actually at the Melbourne Convention Center last February. So exactly a year ago, we were speaking in Melbourne. And um, it's, just, it's just neat to be able to travel out of the country and, and impact people positively, but then also get to pair it with really good traveling. That's my hot button. So yeah. if I get to sneak in some good traveling and sightseeing and culture, that's that's my happy place for sure. So <laughs> it's, it's been a blessing. And we, we do enjoy like the breadth of how much we can impact people public speaking, but then with the one-on-one -on -one coaching, it's neat to go really deep with people. So it's kind of a balance between the two is a, is a cool combination. Yeah, and I can tell how on, on point you are there because I'm just looking at your LinkedIn uh, profile now and it says what your key three key messages are, family, adventure and impact. And that's exactly what you just said there. So that was really interesting. So your kids travel with you? Yeah, a lot of times they do. We took them to Australia and New Zealand with us and my son was 18 months at that time. So I remember getting on the plane and being like, I am the craziest mother in the world because it's like a 23 hour flight. But um, it was really special. It was super cool, very much worth it. Sometimes we have them hang back too, but um, we, we kind of decide based off where we're going and, and everything. So. Now you're having this journey, this business journey and life journey, obviously with your husband. How does that work that you are together 24-7 in this, in this journey together? Uh, we are together a lot and it's an adventure. We have very different strengths. Some of our strengths are actually overlapping, which sometimes means there's some gaps. <laughs> um, we're like, I wish there was like a third person in this, uh, in this inner circle because um, sometimes we have so many of the same strengths that it's, it's almost comical, but we also have very different backgrounds. So his background was in commercial banking and finance. Again, mine was in teaching. Yeah. So we actually cover a fair amount of ground and it's been really neat to run in the same direction just because a lot of partners are really running in different directions in their day job. So we've appreciated the fact that we could really build and create something together really leverage each other's strengths and as much as winning and succeeding has taught us a lot it's actually been failing together that's taught us the most about one another and really the strength of our relationship and so I'd say that's a huge blessing to be able to actually lock arms and run together and experience the whole spectrum of like good bad ugly amazing 
under the banner of entrepreneurship together. Yeah, it's certainly a massive strength that you've got together, that's for sure. So where do you see your business going now? What's the next 10 years look like? Yeah, so we, we feel really good about where we're personally at. Now the, now the vision is how do we pass that baton off? It's a lot less about our lifestyle and our income. It's how do we actually help other people create those choices in that lifestyle and, and get to a position in their life where they feel like they've really created a significant, um, a significant splash in terms of what they have access to and security. So it's, it's really shining the light on other people for us. And we also just started a, an organization last month to help children in need. So we've paired with a number of different nonprofit organizations and that was a passion project for us. We always wanted to give back, you know, outside of our industries. So to be able to get that in place has been a big blessing. Um, our company is Tandem Consulting. So the organization is called Tandem Giving. Beautiful. Um, and it will feed into helping, helping young children. So, again, helping a lot of people do what we've done and then really working to give away a lot of the income and help teach other people how to generously spread spread the wealth around and, and pour into charities that are, are you know, emotional and, and hit home for them. Mm. I think it's an important part of life is that deeper significance. I think it's such an important part of life, being able to reach a stage that you go, I do, I just want to give and I want to make a difference to, to other people. Was there, I'm seeing now that you've got at least, you know, a $5 million annual global turnover. Uh, and so, you know, you've got a really significant business. Did what, what stage did you get to in the business? Do you think that's a personal decision? When is enough enough that you can start thinking of giving back to others? Or was that always in your mindset that that actually has just extended on and, and sort of um, become born at the right time for you? Yeah, I think that was always our mindset. Like, I think when I was 22 and launched my businesses, that was the vision. I remember I was traveling in India. I was backpacking in India, and I went to Gandhi's cremation site. And, you know, the classic quote, my life is my message, mm -hmm. hung there. And it just really resonated because I, I launched my businesses maybe just a couple months after that. And so the goal was how do I be a blessing to people, but do it in a way that's like big. I really wanted that big influence and impact. And so what's, what's neat is that the vision can evolve over time. Like I didn't know how I was going to do that at the time, but I knew that dream was there. So then the goal is how do I get around good people that can kind of help amplify and fan the fire on that vision and make it like more realistic and and plausible. And then I think over time, as someone's self image grows, their confidence grows, their leadership grows, it hopefully the vision also evolves with it in terms of what scale people want to really give back. Mm. And so I think I was naive initially, but had a big dream. And then that naiveness turned into like an actual expertise and resources over time, which has been fun to make that transition and actually be able to, to really give back. Yeah, and I think that's an important point that a lot of people don't know what it all looks like. And because you don't have the whole package, it makes them freeze or say, I'll wait till I know. And often it's what you're saying is it's actually just the intent. It's the dream to move in a certain direction. And with that, as you're moving, you gain clarity and you're able to then refine it and then it suddenly becomes a real real clear truth of, of what you're wanting to pursue. Fantastic. Absolutely. Fantastic. You mentioned before that obviously you've had some big challenges. What have been the hardest times that you've had to learn from? You know, for me, having children stirred things up a little bit, right? Um, I also got diagnosed with an autoimmune illness uh, after, like right after I had my, my first child. Um, that couple years afterwards, I was struggling a lot with my health. Um, and it went undiagnosed, unfortunately. So I think I was playing injured for a number of years. And that was that was very hard because when you're a go-getter and you're a performer and you're in a pretty significant leadership role, it's hard to have a lot of people looking to you for leadership when you're struggling. Yeah. And so that was something that I had to get through. And I, I feel a lot stronger as a function of that. And I think my level of empathy for people with health challenges is like through the roof. So I, I wouldn't say I would choose to get an autoimmune disease, but it's, it's made me a much better person. And I think a better leader to have that perspective because at some phase or another, people go through health things and 
should be a good resource and a, a point of strength for people in that phase, I think is, is a neat tool in leadership to support people. Yeah. In a way, I, I just wouldn't have had that perspective had that not been my experience. So. And I find that with most challenges, that's right, you wouldn't wish them on yourself. You don't def definitely didn't invite them. But after you've experienced them, that's right, when you can see it as a positive that you go, well, because I had to go through this, I now have incredible empathy. I have compassion. I have. I appreciate the need to self-care. I appreciate the need to have a break and actually balance, you know, my personal needs, my health needs with my career. Um, these, I find that those times allow you to reflect and then be able to move forward in a lot more powerful way because of the experiences that you've had. Right. And, uh, so how can people find you, Carrie? Yeah, so I'm super active on LinkedIn. I would say LinkedIn is a great spot for people to, to reach out to either myself or Craig, of course. And I'm also pretty active on Instagram. So if people use Instagram, my handle's at Carrie Bolig. So I would say either of those mediums are, are great, great avenues to keep in touch. Terrific. Well, we certainly appreciate the time that you've given up today to share your insights about your journey, your learnings, uh, what other people can um, look forward to in actually finding a high-level uh, mentor and coach and the value that that gives, um, gives to them. So thank you. You're, you're a true inspiration. You're an amazing lady, and uh, I really thank you for giving up your time today. Oh, thank you so much, Annie. It was a great discussion, and appreciate you having me on. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Memoirs of Successful Women. You can find me at anniegibbons.com where you can download my free resources, get connected on social and check out my online magic transformation program. If you love this show, feel free to subscribe to future episodes and of course, share it with your friends. I'll see you again soon and until then, happy podcasting.